I V M. Hey, <laughs> this has become a thing. No? Yeah, I, I, hey, Shunitra. Uh, hi, hi, Shunitra. <laughs> no, I don't get your name uh, wrong. Yeah, hi, well, Farad. I I binged uh, some of our episodes. Yeah, uh, this week. And I realized that uh, whenever I said, "Is that the right?" Uh, actually, there's no wrong way to pronounce your name. There you're fine really with, isn't. You're fine with all of it. Yeah, but I, I like Nitro. Just yeah. Nitro. Mm-hmm. Hi, mm-hmm. what's up? What's up with you? Ah, uh, don't don't answer a question with a question. Question? <laughs> oh my god! Ah, <laughs> uh, what's up with me? Ah, uh, nothing much. My house just got painted. It was a nightmare. Mm. Uh, I couldn't cook for so all these days. I was oh terrible. damn! Uh, on top of that. Uh, the one person i've had a crush on in the last 4 years uh, who's moved to the states uh, was temporarily back in india so oh. to meet him so that was a little stressful mm-hmm. but not he doesn't know it but it just for me it was a little oh stressful. like the, it's it's an unrequited crush it's right? not it was just back then it was in a time when he was into me i was into ah. him and i was into him he wasn't into me so it was bad timing constantly ah. so it wasn't and nowadays what is unrequited everything yeah, is yeah, like yeah. even existing relationships are <laughs> yeah like, okay. all right kuch nahi hai hmm ha ah. kya kya I've had a pretty une- I mean uneventful I would say like you know work and play just mm. regular stuff mm. but yeah I've had some great sessions with my therapist and okay. and yeah so so like I have like this new like outlook to life I guess because of my therapist okay. uh, where I'm looking at things more positively Do you think it's like, the medication or the conversation Maybe it's both <laughs> yeah maybe it's both yeah, yeah. So yeah, the medications are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the medicines are just doing the job, and 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 the conversations have been amazing because uh, it gives you an insight into um, things you've done in the past and why you've yeah. done them, and yeah. and uh, you know I'm training muscle memory, like how Sweet. not to kind Sweet. of uh, uh, get back into patterns that I used to. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's amazing. I, I, you know it's so funny a lot of times my friends they don't go to uh, psychiatrists they go mm-hmm. to psychologists yeah. so they go to talk they don't yeah. Yeah, they don't go, go down the medicine route yeah. and i'm one of those people <laughs> that no matter how much i'm prepared mm. to talk to my therapist the moment i sit in the chair in front of them i have no idea what to say i have 5000 things to say before, before. and after the one hour that i get to talk to them <laughs> but when i in that one hour i just don't end up either saying anything i plan to say Hmm. Also but I've been with the same therapist for the past 10 years mm-hmm. uh and I absolutely love him and he's one of those he doesn't give a shit mm. and uh, what? by <laughs> by by he doesn't honestly even that's worked I know what I just yeah. said but like uh with him it's uh he just wants to know the fluff on top like Got it. what's happening what's happening how how mm. how bad is it how crazy mm-hmm. is it he doesn't want to know like oh is it like Deep this is how I feel about seated. my mom right now. This is what I feel about like boys right now and shit like that. He just like literally just like scribble, scribble, scribble while you're talking and here, just take this comeback. See me in a month. Mm. Uh, he's on the and I'm I'm happy. I'm happy like that. Ah, like, yeah. Because uh, even in his need to because he's genuinely one of those people who uh, people who makes me feel like is he actually listening to any of my problems because mm. he's very he's not dismissive yeah uh i don't know if other therapists are listening to this and going like oh my god he's got a terrible therapist but trust me this guy's really helped me he's helped a lot of people mm. i know of he's uh, one of the forebearers of the lgbtq movement that's, in india that's nice yeah. uh, and uh, if you want to give him a shout out do that no no no, no. okay then <laughs> Why not? all right uh, but at some point uh, i feel like even his i wouldn't say dismissiveness but his apathy mm. has made me feel like you know what this guy probably deals with people who have way bigger issues than mm. me uh which he's taught me that i should never do actually mm. because you know sometimes it's so easy to fall into this trap of at least my problems are not as bad as this it mm. could be worse if this happened mm-hmm. you know a lot of times when you're going through shit yeah we tend to do that like yeah. oh this person has it worse than me so at least i'm at better least, yeah. but actually even that's a very toxic thing to do it is yeah because sometimes you end up belittling your own problems, own problems even yeah. if they are trivial yeah. you know uh whether it's just like you're dealing with jealousy yeah, you're dealing yeah. with something you think it's trivial it's not if you're yeah. feeling it it's real speaking of problems <laughs> <laughs> so um i mean 
there's no way to segue into this. But no, like, you know, let's we should just, stop yeah, segueing. segueing. Just say, yeah. what do you want to talk yeah, about today? I mean, what do you want to talk we about? We should talk about breakups Done. completely. Done. Because Done. Is there any specific reason you want to talk about breakups? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Because uh, I guess because I don't know what it feels like because it, it, because I haven't had a breakup for a while. Same here. Yeah. Same here. And I, I, only had and I was have... having this conversation. Yeah. So I'll tell you why. Hmm. Because um, a friend of mine visited me uh, I mean she stays in Hong Kong one of my best friends mm. so so uh, this Sunday she came over to my place she was she's visiting her brother in mm. Bombay mm-hmm. and uh, so finally we met uh, after almost a year she got married last year so we were talking about a lot of things that we've been going through and uh, and uh, we were talking about uh, we are two very very different people mm. one married one single mm. um, and how our journeys with anxiety and mental health mm. have been so polar like just diametric like so similar mm. while yet at the same time uh, uh, yeah. yet yeah, yeah. and uh, she was talking about how uh, her relationship mm. was something that helped her and i was talking about how the fact that i didn't have a relationship helped me and that's why i can kind I add of. a third layer to that? Yeah. I When I was in a relationship, uh, my uh, bipolar root disorder was at its peak. Hmm. And I was the third option, which was, oh. oh my God, my lover has to go through this with me. You hmm. know what I mean? Uh, I was in a relationship and I always, which was terrible because when he uh, fucked up, I felt like he fucked up because of my mental illness. So I found a way mm. to blame myself oh my again. God. That, oh shit, he has to deal with so much. Obviously, he fucked up. It wasn't a, oh my God, I'm pushing him away with all my mental illness. He was very supportive and all. Mm. In fact, mm. till date, I feel like even though it did not work out, I, f- I always give him credit for how well he handled me. Uh, mm. Not that I was an irrational person or anything, mm. but it was just... I was very to myself and dealing with yeah. this on my own and I did not want it to be the nature of my illness or such that I didn't or the kind of person I am I did not want this person to go through that hmm. so I used to keep it to myself but I f- feel like he was still in the uh, what is it called the path of hmm. uh, your collateral damage yeah, yeah, yeah. He, there was a lot of collateral in the she, he was in that zone hmm. where he would sometimes have to because uh for example, one of the biggest things I had to, I had a, you know, what psychosomatic disorder. Yeah, is. Yeah. So a lot of times I used to imagine that I have cancer or like mm. I would, which is common. A lot of people do that mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Google's made it worse yeah, for it a was. lot of people. But yeah. in my case, I started imagining it, mm. imagining it and in some way hallucinating it. And then it would become real. So I'll give you an example for the longest time. I had found a node in my neck mm. and, uh, it was everybody gets little nodes and notches yeah, in your yeah. body knots and whatever yeah. and uh, I found one and for some odd reason I was smoking so much back then I was smoking mm. so many cigarettes I was smoking so much weed hash all the time that I was convinced I had cancer mm. and uh, that's a knot that knot is a cancer and then it reached a point where I started thinking oh my god this knot is growing now in reality mm. that knot was the exact same size as it is today mm. I'm talking this was like 6-7 years I can still mm. feel it while I'm yeah, talking to yeah, you I'm feeling yeah, my yeah. knot but when I stood in front of a mirror I would actually see a huge goiter mm. like a yeah, yeah, have yeah. you ever seen a goiter like, yeah, yeah. I couldn't see my neck and that really made me question my sanity mm. so I was that batshit crazy yeah. I don't mean to don't, say don't batshit crazy yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean yeah. I was I mm. was feeling I was on that frying pan yeah, yeah, every yeah. day all the time where I was like holy shit and then this person with me mm. had to see me like that mm. so that I I felt like was I was a little mm. Mm. I gave him a lot of benefit of doubt because I was like that basically mm. I think instead of um, Almost laying down all our breakups. Mm. I think we should talk about the best breakups we've had and the worst breakups. <laughs> what are the we've best break? Yeah. You know, I'll have standard breakups, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Really? Yeah. I'll like have I've had breakups. like all over the place. I have like, a way to oh deal God. with breakups, and I did this on uh, Keeping It Queer too. I did an yeah. uh, episode about breakups, and. I remember I felt like I did not have much to contribute because I genuinely feel I have a system down, mm. a tight lock system down when it comes mm. to breakups oh, and how I to don't. deal with them yeah. and how to not let them affect me mm. and how to not like become a... But that's now, right? Like, or forever? 
it's uh, parts of it was forever i mm. i have to say i have a system down since forever and it's worked great for me okay. we'll, we'll probably get to it because then i'll have yeah. to yeah 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 i mean but what's a good breakup okay you... so i think a good breakup is one i have in my opinion obviously Actually, in my yeah. humble opinion yeah is one where you mutually agree on it's not a working. fact that yeah. it's not working and my yeah. last breakup was exactly that mm-hmm. i remember turning sorry how long ago was it this was around uh, mm, two years back okay um i was in a relationship with this lovely man mm. um i was 30 ish mm. like i i was about to turn 30 he mm. was uh 35 then and mm. uh we really 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 liked each other mm. uh but we both had very very busy schedules mm. and and uh, we realized that we are just really good friends in the midst mm. of all of that what i used to love about our time together was the fact that i'm a hyper person mm. uh, and he would like his presence would make me calm mm. and i um i guess i missed i wouldn't say mistook it but i i i saw that as a as a form of love okay and he saw the opposite as a form of love where okay. i would uh, you know add and he's a calm person mm. but i would add infuse energy into his mm. life and mm. and we realized that that's not it mm. and and uh, because of the lack of time because of all of that we mm. realized that it's not working out hmm. so let's sorry how long were you all dating for it's irrelevant almost but... a year okay yeah okay. so so then we we just had this very mature conversation over some really good food and really good alcohol hmm. and uh, and we said you know we really like each other but sure. i don't think we love each other yeah and we said yeah Mm. It's it's shit though. It's it's sad, but but see, that's what I it is. I feel like first of all, and it was comfortable. Mm. I think mm. that's a good breakup where mm. you're comfortable. Mm. You don't go back. You obviously you 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 you're not happiest. You're not like <laughs> beatific about sure. uh, a relationship ending, sure. but like it doesn't devastate you. You know that it it didn't work out. It's fine. It's I get it. I get yeah. it. And that. the fact is i feel a lot of times uh, i listen to people who are going through a breakup and who are breaking up and stuff and i just feel like for them it's tough to being gay in 2019 yeah. i feel like it's tough to come to terms with the fact that oh my god i have to do this whole process again, again. it hardly is yeah. ever about the breakup in yeah, question yeah. or happening point back, yeah. th- back then you feel Fuck, like oh my god this is not forever i have to again thought, put my yeah. walls down for someone else i have yeah. to again be vulnerable Absolutely. i have to again invite someone into my life and sort of yeah. get into someone's life like it just the i feel like again with hookup culture and dating yeah. culture the way it is nowadays it seems like such a titanic fucking task, task. to like because the moment you open yourself up to a relationship yeah the idea of a forever is so 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 far away as and on outdated. the horizon <laughs> and our, no and and that's the cynic but, in me yeah yeah but like that's what everyone's looking for sure. right sure. and that idea just like slips further away with that one breakup yeah. right like then one snap like but can i quickly give an alternate option yeah have you tried opening up in every because here's the deal you mm. right now what i just said right it becomes like oh i have to do all of this all over again yeah but and i again if you're talking about my shrink once my shrink asks me why don't you do it all the time like i started know, doing that why don't you actually i 100% have started yeah, doing that why do you have to wait for another person who will to meet certain criteria say, yeah. for you to again why don't you just do it with everyone and it really made me question it's and, so so strange that you're telling me this because yeah. I used to be this I mean I maybe at uh, on some level I still am I'm, I'm very care, you know I'm very um selective about mm. when I when I sleep with people mm. who stays over okay and off late mm. I don't have a problem mm. with people staying over mm. because I end up enjoying the conversation in fact sure. today I mm. have I'm meeting someone mm. who we decided we'll smoke up we'll have alcohol mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and he'll stay over and mm-hmm. i'm i'm glad he's yeah. he'll stay over because i'm comfortable yeah. with yeah. this guy 
if things happen <laughs> they'll happen in terms of like yeah. grow beyond yeah. a hookup yeah. um but that's who i'm becoming the thing is i'm putting myself in i'm laughing because i'm putting myself in your shoes and the first question i thought was i hope this person sleeps by 12 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> no that ain't happening like on a, a friday night for uh, yeah, me yeah i know for me it's just like you know i've th- watched three episodes or something today <laughs> and i watched i want to watch uh, the remaining three episodes uh, and i hope this person sleeps only so i can go back yeah. to doing that uh Yeah man uh okay uh, breakups yeah are they good break there are good breakups there are good honestly breakups. Yeah. can i tell you something i feel like I've had only good breakups. I've I've had toxic. Fuck you! No, 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 not really get over someone but i just feel like i've been in toxic relationships mm. but i've always known how to end those relationships mm. uh number one it comes from uh, crystal clear honesty with yourself i feel like in my life i am except food mm. i am honest to myself about everything mm. food is the only <laughs> section in my life i lie to myself mm. about all the time yeah yeah nothing eat one mm. more bucket of fried chicken ho jayega chalo it's okay yeah don't exercise today it's fine like that kind of physical this yeah. i i have no idea how to make head or tails of it but uh, when it comes to breakups i feel like i'm so good at just i immediately understand when something is salvageable and it's not mm-hmm. and the moment i know that i i have no problem like working towards ending or working on a relationship mm. uh and that's helped me immensely i don't know if i managed to consolidate because a lot of things for example a lot of things go into me having had when i say i've had good breakups i'll give you an example if i'm sure like today first of all i don't say even you said right uh in your previous relationship you broke up you all sat down and yeah. you had this conversation i don't think a breakup happens over a conversation i feel like a breakup is always a culmination of, of multiple course, yeah, things yeah, yeah. that happen over time. time yeah and in my case i let those things happen and i'm very like i notice them but i don't bring them up hmm. i i actually i add them as little bricks into the build up of my breakup i i actually know i i fortify the fact that i know this is not going to work out and mm. this is why this is why this is why this is why mm-hmm, this is what mm-hmm. i do this is what he does this is and then it's easy for me to just take off from yeah, that that's, cliff no, that's that's so i don't actually break up i know now this part might sound unhealthy but i don't actually break up and i have to i take a good 2 to 3 months to actually just fortify and insulate myself with why this is happening why it won't work out and this is how i walk out of it with the least amount of damage yeah but then what about the other person uh, what my idea of a good breakup mm. is where both people mm. are yeah, mutual, equally yeah, yeah yeah at peace e- equally at peace and i feel a lot of it i think i said this before also i feel it has a lot to do with the blame game the moment mm. you don't blame the other person for it not having worked out and they yeah. don't blame you i and actually i learned this from demi more uh i actually once read an interview uh i think i spoke about this the thing is when i <laughs> do so many podcasts i'm like have i spoken about this before but i'll uh, quickly say it again uh there was a picture that had come out years ago where demi moore is on a yacht with bruce willis and ashton kutcher her ex and her mm. present husband and their kids and they all are having a great time it was like a proper mm. shoot and all and someone asked her how can you how do you manage this how do you manage mm. your ex husband and your future husband and i remember she said that we never blamed each other for things not working mm. out and we accepted there was no fault or mm. nothing to find and that it did not work out because just again it's a cliche but sometimes the people are right the circumstances are not mm. which is a lot of times which is what causes friction you know mm. where you are in life you want an open relationship your partner doesn't yeah, yeah. you want this but they want this but you don't want that this is passion is dead but they are they feel passion is there you know it's always some mm. sort of like tectonic shift between a yeah. relationship that causes uh cracks basically yeah. and i felt like that's when we start playing the i'm better at this than you are you are yeah, yeah, you're yeah, wrong yeah, about yeah. this you i feel like when you keep your relationship free of that 
breakups are always then even if it's a toxic relationship i'll go like be a show off and say that that even if you're in a toxic relationship i don't think your breakups have to be bad yeah sure but like there are two people in a relationship hmm. and perceptions can be different sure. in terms of for example hmm. while you're insulating yourself hmm. this other person might be feeling like they are still while Vested. you're fortifying the reasons to break up sure. the other person might be fortifying reasons to make it work yeah and then the moment you drop the bomb so sure. to say sure. the two people are not at the same place at the same time that so how does that work so i get what i'm saying is selfish <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah but uh i get what i'm saying is selfish and it's very me it's about mm. me but uh yaar i have i feel like i have the sentience to understand when something is good for me and mm. something is no not. of course i mean you and, have to think about yourself no and, doubt and i also feel like somehow i have managed to impart sentience in every fuck i'm sounding like oh this is i'm so good at this or whatever hmm. i'm not hmm. i'm not but i always feel like i have never changed a person in a relation because i feel like that's a big part of it what happens in a lot of relationships is there's something you want the other person to do that satisfies you whether mm. it's sexual whether it's the kind of books they read whether, mm. whatever it is yeah. there's something you want out of that person and that person wants out of you and i feel like i've always been very good at making sure the person doesn't have to live up to any expectations of mm. mine and that i don't have to live up to any expectations mm. and once that happens i've always found some tranquil buoyancy in all my relationships and i'm good at like getting the other person to see this mm. that hey if we don't try because a relationship doesn't have to Ish. it's it's sure it's work it's work but it's it, work but it you don't have be, to try yeah. to impress me yeah. or try to do anything yeah. i just like you right now as you are and i will try to change you in only ways that are beneficial to you hmm. today if i want you yeah, to be, you want to be i want you to be a better being. person yeah, basically course, yeah. uh not that i find deeply flawed human beings hmm. in that sense but i genuinely just and i want them to change me because there's yeah, so many yeah. things i don't fucking yeah, know absolutely. like i'll give you an example this whole conversation we had about dressing you yeah, know yeah we, we once spoke about how you are fashion forward and you always mm. it's a big part of your life and i spoke about but i've had a boyfriend who genuinely made me love buying new clothes and mm. he taught me that in a good way mm. it's just i never applied it to my life <laughs> but he taught me that he changed me mm. in a good way to think about hey why appearances not appearances but why it's yeah. good to treat yourself to good things mm. in life and i wasn't that person yeah so if you organically change each other for the better and not like you need to stop doing this you need to stop doing that you need to like you know of course stop yeah. this stop that no, that's stop. that's yeah. because you're trying Less to change someone for and your more freedom yeah you because it's it's to your service and that's just toxic sure, right sure, like sure sure uh, that's what i feel like it's the difference between restricting someone yeah. and giving someone the freedom yeah. to do something that would just make you nice yeah yeah absolutely uh, so i feel like i've i've somehow managed and uh, the only testament i have that it has worked in the past is again i'll say this every ex of mine till date has only the nicest things to say about mm. me they still want to keep in touch with me mm. they still always say that, that in some way that was their most like favorite relationship and i again i can't help but like sound cocky that i'm saying mm. all these things but i feel like i've always done something right i might be terrible at finances i might be terrible mm. at like navigating my own life and how to like be a good not be a good person but like how to like professionally yeah, prosper yeah. or whatever but i feel like this is one thing i've been gifted it's mm. like like my little thing that i know i'm good at mm. so uh the only reason is because i see how breakups devastate my yeah. friends sometimes and i get it yaar it's not like sometimes it's not about you parting ways because you yeah. don't get along with the person sometimes your finances are tied with another person yeah, yeah. your living situation is tied with another person i got a cat with my ex boyfriend mm. for fuck sake you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so you really intertwine with this person and mm. then to undo that is the painful mm. part but i guarantee you if you always and there's no way of saying this without being selfish but if you put yourself first i feel like breakups can be a breeze i will i will be as uh, 
daring yeah. to go and say that but i feel like if you put yourself first uh yeah i get it i get it there will always be a what about the other person yeah, then yeah 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 but, but i feel like i want a lover who always puts himself first not in terms of like this crab piece is mine or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i get the last yeah. bonbon in the fridge no, no i feel like I've had experiences in the past and I'm a deeply mm. flawed individual like mm. I um I've had experiences in the past by putting myself first mm. in the process of putting myself first mm. I've I've uh, in retrospect I've been very cruel mm. uh in in terms of how I've treated people sure. uh for example um I'm also like uh, sometimes I get into uh, a space where the worlds of black instead of living in a world of grays mm. i start living in a world of blacks and whites when when push comes to shove mm. where you know if a person's really really pushed my buttons that mm. far mm. it's like snap like mm. i cannot make peace with that person mm. to a point that we can't even be friends mm. uh and and in the process of that cutting ties with that person mm. becomes so absolute mm. that i that i see a very cruel i see a side to of yours uh, that you don't that i enjoy. don't like yeah, yeah. and but uh, see i don't ever let it go there huh? I yeah don't, like when me, i say put like myself I, first like and and cruel is the wrong word i become cold sure and that sure. that's that's something that i consciously try and avoid sure. now because um i because i see how warm i can be with mm, people mm. and i want mm. that to be sure. me yeah, like yeah. you know but why why should i let anything get to a point of such uh, a- abject coldness I get with it. someone you know what you call abject coldness i see a lot of myself in it as jaded i always see like yeah. am i too jaded yeah uh i don't think i am mm. <laughs> i don't think i'm jaded mm. i just feel like i understand again i i i sometimes feel like i just blame the times we live in the times mm. we live in what dating is like and what yeah. hookups i say that a lot a lot of times yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's the reality of it and yeah. again i have no qualms holding up the car like the mirror in front of me understanding that okay if my lover cheats on me yeah. it is okay to be an unreason have an unreasonable response to it yeah. uh but when i tackle it from the other end and i immediately get in knowing that this person is capable of hurting me hmm. and i keep that window always open hmm. it's lesser in that sense yes, i always yeah. think about myself like yeah, yeah. tomorrow I, and fucking there are quotes by bob marley that yeah, say yeah. that the people who love you the most will always yeah. fucking hurt you the most yeah. whether it's your parents your family mm. your lover it will always be the, the worst it will hurt the most when it's someone even yeah. it comes from someone you love the most yeah and uh I always keep that window open for disappointment not disappointment but like a let down of expectations mm. uh which is a separate conversation again because I feel like I'm jaded in that sense where I mm. don't expect anything from anyone Got it. uh even if it's a lover mm. I expect them to love me yeah. to respect me yeah. uh but I don't expect them to yeah. live their life on my terms yeah, in yeah. any way no i know what you mean because i remember when i was 23 and hmm. a friend of mine and i was very i i remember being very pissed at this friend hmm. of mine when he told me that you know one of the most beautiful relationships hmm. one a, a relationship can be so beautiful hmm. if you are freed of expectations from each other and i was like fuck that what is that i mean how is that even a relationship sure. yeah. at that point of time yeah. and today i see that i mm. i see the value of that mm. i see the beauty in a relationship mm. which is obviously there's commitment obviously there's love mm. obviously there's concern obviously there's mm. uh, regard for each mm. other mm. and respect for each other mm. but expectations mm. are like weights they mm. weigh you down and and because uh, and especially expectations that are unsaid expectations which sure. you build in your head absolutely and i rem- like i remember that time i was like how can you even say that you know mm. how can a uh, how can mm. you even sustain a relationship without each of you knowing mm. what this what you're in this sure. for yeah. and i rea- I, i realized how transactional that kind of a relationship sure. would be yeah and today i um i i recently just opened up to 
the idea mm-hmm. because i was taking a hiatus from the idea of even a relationship mm-hmm. uh, for the last mm-hmm. two years and mm-hmm. and now i'm open to it and mm-hmm. i'm open in this way where i don't expect mm-hmm. i just the only expectation is contentment and sure. joy sure and if a person gives me joy that's mm-hmm. what i'm looking yeah. for yeah. and that's about it yeah uh why look for more because I mean, obviously, there has to be conversation. There, you, there has to be stimulus and stimulation. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what else? And and yeah, I get it. And here's the deal. And here's the thing, right? You said you're a deeply flawed person. I'm a deeply flawed person. Who isn't a deeply yeah. flawed person? And I feel like there is beauty in a relationship of when a person loves you for how flawed you are. Yeah. And I feel like. The only reason I loved all my exes is because they somehow always came around to love my flaws more than what I bring to the mm-hmm. table. Uh, I'm going to straight up say it. Even the kind of messages I receive, at least for the podcast yeah. that we do, yeah. is always about thank you for being so vulnerable. So vulnerable, yeah. Thank you for being so open real. and so real. Yeah. And I feel like when I do that in a relationship, and it's not even something I consciously yeah. do. It just comes naturally to me to put myself out there as this is who I am. This is how I am. Yeah. Uh, this is what I am. Fucking love me. Because That's amazing for you because I'm not I, like I'm, I'm building up to be that person now sure. because I have this, um, uh, perfectionist syndrome mm-hmm. which which my shrink tells me is mm. one of the things i need to work on mm. where um i have to do things a certain way and i have to perform the best and sure. i have to be yeah. the best and yeah. and and, and Boo from so th- k3g <laughs> no please no no and the thing is uh, one of the most flawed thoughts in my mm, head mm, for for the longest time was mm. that the best version of me is has to be a perfect version of mm, me mm. and that's so that's toxic that's such an unrealistic that's expectation so fucking, of yourself yes yeah, that's yeah. so toxic I get it. because the best version of yeah. you is still a flawed yeah. version of you I get it. and and that's what i i'm working towards yeah. and yeah. and it's amazing how this podcast has helped mm. me do that because yeah. I I look at our first few episodes that I recorded and mm. that we recorded mm. and and I've seen how much I've opened up over time and and it it just shows me that there's Absolutely. a long way to go yeah but I every day yeah. I'm opening up and yeah. I'm okay with being a yeah. flawed person yeah. I'm okay not being yeah. boxed into this you That's know amazing and 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 because I yeah. I'm okay not being scared of being judged yeah. for not being yeah. pitch perfect. Yeah. It's so funny you say that. Like you just said, right? That with every episode you feel you're doing yeah. this. I guess for other people, it's with every benchmark in life or age they feel this. Yeah. For me, I felt like I've immensely grown with every breakup yeah. in my life. And obviously, that's like a... Uh, Given. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's quite a sanctimoniously sure. prickish thing to say that, oh, I've grown after a relationship. But I feel like that's another reason I'm very okay with breakups. Mm. Is because I literally know what not to repeat. And it's something I cannot learn or get myself to do. Have I not experienced it in a relationship? Mm. I'll give you an example. Uh one of the problems a lot of people have had with me in a relationship is that I am not a possessive person. Hmm. Now, let me just take stop there and like be like, wait, why do I have to be possessive? Hmm. You know, because again, I don't expect the other person. And it's been a genuine point of concern. A lot of times in the past, my partners have told me that you are not possessive enough. You don't care enough if I philander and mm. whatever. And which mm. is, I feel like, am I right or are you right? Yeah. You know, because the first thing is that if I'm not possessive, does not mean I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, I'm not going to wreck myself because if you, because yeah. in any, I feel for me, and I'm just literally talking about this one thing, possessiveness, yeah. right? I feel like for me, Possessiveness lies in the realm where I don't trust you, yeah. that I don't, uh, I think that you might treat, yeah. me, uh, you might not respect what you have with me. I don't have any of that because I fundamentally believe I cannot own another person yeah. or I cannot have another yeah. person report to me and expect, you know, again, it of boils course, down to expectations. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like 
I the th- it's tough for me to talk about because it's so easy for other to label this as jadedness or cynicism mm. or whatever or that I'm being stoic or nihilistic or all these mm. words you know I get them often not in relationships my friends mm. think those things but I think it works for me mm. I think it works for me because I'm not going to if my boyfriend decides to go out clubbing with his friends to a gay club I'm not going to sit at home worry that oh my god is he going to accidentally suck someone's yeah, dick yeah. Uh, I'm going to Worry that he doesn't do too many drugs, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But I'm now not here's gonna... the thing. Now, I know we're delving into more than breakups, obviously. Yeah. But you wouldn't. One part is not being okay, uh, like mm. being okay with mm. him going out with his friends mm. and going to a club. Mm-hmm. What are you okay with? Are you okay with the possibility that uh, he might actually suck someone's dick, or the fact that you trust this person enough to? Take care of your feelings. I am okay with things not working out. <laughs> Got it. There. there. Yeah. I'm just going to zoom right yeah. ahead like, and say... It like, is what it is. It is what it is. If he's mm. going to cheat on me, if he's going to fuck around behind my back, yeah. if he's whatever, it is going to happen. Yeah. But if today I can be myself and this person values who I am mm. and if he's going to stick his dick somewhere that he shouldn't be sticking his dick. Yeah. And in those moments, if he feels what he has back at home is full of value, that's my job, Hmm. you know, to provide that value, to show what I bring to the table and why I might be. And then again, it's not an unrealistic expectation of me because I feel like I did my best. Hmm. Another thing that I love about breakups is I always felt I walked out thinking because I've been so vulnerable, so honest, so real, so this, that. I gave it my best. I always felt like, hey... We worked at it. Uh, at yeah. least I did. Yeah. I did my bit. Yeah. You know? So I don't have any sort of baggage that I want to take yeah. beyond that point. And that's the thing. I see it right now as multiple bags. When a breakup is happening, yeah. there's the baggage of where I fucked up. What did I mm. do wrong? What you did wrong? What went wrong? Yeah. What I shouldn't have done? What you should have done? What? There's yeah, so yeah. many bags, right? Yeah. But I feel like there are so many bags to just drop at yeah. this point. Like, yeah. because... You did, you tried your best, man. Yeah. Like, you know, and if you, in that sense, it's because we repeatedly hear and say that mm. relationships are work. They are. Yeah. There's no denying yeah, that. Yes. And if you do your bit, mm. and sometimes I say, I heard this in our, in an episode previously that we spoke about where I'm terrified because I've been single for so long. Maybe I have no idea what it's like to be dating nowadays <laughs> yeah. and that I will, I won't be able to apply any of these things yeah. that I say to my next relationship. But, I just know to quote Nirvana, come as you are, come as you were. I just, I actually am that person. I will come as I am and oof. And, uh, oh, well, well. Yeah. But yeah, this is me and uh, fuck, I, I, let's, let's get into a break. Because yeah, we'll be, yeah, yeah. But I, before we go into a break, there is something I feel like everybody has to watch. It's a YouTube video. It's two and a half minutes long. It's Eartha Kit. Do you remember Eartha yeah, Kit, yeah, the yeah, singer? Of course, yeah. Just YouTube Eartha Kit, Love and, and Compromise. Catwoman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eartha Kit, Love and Compromise. Mm. Uh, it's a two, it's a short snippet. And trust me, I watch that video at least twice a week. I'm not kidding for the past 20 years. It's mm. a little, I'm not exaggerating. I literally watched, not 20 years because YouTube wasn't around, but ever since YouTube is around and I found that video, it literally is like, relationship exercise for me to remind myself a certain thing Mm. and uh, basically she ends that interview with I always want someone to share me with me Mm. and I I that's my philosophy yeah I want someone to share me with me and I know how that sounds it's selfish again but I also want to share the other person with them. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, what yeah. they bring of value, I want to project that to them that you do these things for me. Yeah. And this is how you make me a better person. And I want them to come, mm. like, reciprocate yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's the only transaction I expect in a yeah, relationship. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I feel that's the bud of mutual respect. Yep. So, yeah. Eartha Kit, Love and Compromise, please watch it. It's life changing. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into a quick break and we'll be back back. shortly. See you on the other side. 
Hey, everybody. Welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, please make sure you do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, quick reminder, please do fill out our survey. It's at ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It's a listener survey. We're trying to understand more about who's listening to our stuff, what kind of things you would like to see from us in the future, what you have been seeing so far, what you think of it. What shows you like? All kinds of different stuff. Also, who you are, right? So, I mean, like, all kinds of different stuff. Just please do come in and fill it out. It'll be really helpful. That's ivmpodcast.com slash survey. I want to thank our sponsors this week, Cambly, Intel, and Storytel. Remember, sponsors are what make this stuff possible. So, if you enjoy the content, please do thank our sponsors. We have two new shows releasing this week. Lakshmi Krishnan, better known as Literary Chills on Twitter, talks to agents of literary culture on her show Lit Nama. She plunges deep into new genres of literature born in the digital era as she talks to the performers, storytellers, bloggers, poets, and writers. New episodes are out every Tuesday from 10th December. The Traveling Professor's Diary is hosted by Siddharth Deshmukh. It's a show about a curious human being with an eagerness for travel and observation. He visits colleges such as MICA, SP Jain, Symbiosis, Flame, Upgrad, Talent Age, and spreads the digital gospel of design, marketing, and business transformation. Episodes are out every Tuesday and Thursday starting 10th of December. This week, The Seen and the Unseen celebrates its 150th episode. Amit is joined by publisher and editor V.K. Kartika. She talks about her journey of publishing and highlights the need of diversity in a publishing house. This week on IVM Likes, Abbas and Alakar are joined by me, Amit Doshi, along with Pawan Srinath, who hosts our Pragati podcast and Thalaharate. We discuss our favorite fantasy fiction movies, books, and everything else. Do tune in. It's quite a fun conversation. And we talk about all kinds of weird stuff. On Storytellers and Storytellers, Vineet is joined by storyteller Anisha Dixit, better known as Rikshawali and storyteller Tracy D'Souza, former channel head at TVF's Garliapa. They talk about the future of women creators in India, how they work with brands, and how their teams perceive them as leaders. On Ganatantra, Saryu and Alok unpack what happened in Maharashtra after the assembly polls and how the office of the governor has been misused to meddle in state politics. On Edges and Sledges, Ashwin Varun and DJ focus on the India vs. West Indies T20 series. On Gaby CD, Sunetra and Farah talk about relationships and breakups as they share their experiences of navigating through the same and learn to acknowledge their feelings. It's a crossover on the Empowering series as Zarina is in conversation with Chetna, host of Positivity Unlimited. They talk about her shift from the corporate world to life coaching, about positivity and self-belief. On 9XM Soundcast, Eva is joined by Bollywood singer Benny Dayal. They talk about his experience of working with A.R. Rahman and some of his favorite composers in Bollywood. And with that, let's get on with your show. And we're back. Hi. <laughs> Talking about breakups and relationships and the whole shebang. Yeah. 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 You know, one of the things that I've always uh, wondered mm. and done is um, wondered how differently I would approach a breakup if I were doing it today. Yeah. And um, and I just like, like knowing the fact mm. that um, with every passing year, mm. the, the imagined situation mm. just gets more and more peaceful. Mm. There used to be a point of time where the imagined conversation in some situations was so confrontational. Mm. How the fuck mm. you, like you did, I can't mm. believe you did mm. this to me. Mm. I can't believe this happened. Mm. But with every passing year um, of my life, mm. my conversation, that that imagined conversation that I have mm. becomes all about saying, it's shit that this can't work out. Yeah. But... It can't work out. Like I, one of my um, most significant relationships was uh, back in college mm. uh, where we broke up because there was just this miscommunication of he was closeted mm. and I remember having a conversation. I mean, we broke up because there was a certain, like, like I felt slighted and insulted mm. For certain things, and you were also way younger, uh, way, way younger. Yeah. Like this yeah. was twenty four. So, yeah. um, but at the same time, I remember that there was. Uh, but we were on good terms for mm. a good for a mm. long time, mm. and I think the breakup happened after uh, after a good six seven months after the breakup, the mm. the first sure. breakup, mm. where Ground I'd spoken. <laughs> yeah, I'd spoken to another friend about. And no one else knew in college about this relationship. Mm. And I had spoken to another friend saying, you know what? Um, it's sad that it didn't work out, but this was what it was. Mm. And I had confided in this friend. Mm. And mm. and this friend spoke to another friend mm. who spoke to my ex. Okay. Saying that, by the way, this boy is going around saying this kind of shit about you. 
And I remember him um, because he was closeted, mm. calling me in a panic and being so hurt, mm. thinking that I was trying to out him out Just of spite. Just because it did not work out. Yeah. Mm. And I remember the conversation was so animated. At, like it was such a heated conversation from his end. Mm. I... To, like I remember I got so pissed off mm. that there was no one listening to each other mm. and then it just like was silence sure, sure. I tried uh, you know extending an olive branch later mm. on his birthday because I wanted to get, because we 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 knew each other uh, others passions really well mm. and then obviously I was slighted mm. uh, because he was still very hurt mm. I wish today, mm. I, I wish that this had happened today because I would have reacted so, so differently. And yeah, like I, I, I maybe would have not lost my temper. At yeah. him. And I, I, I maybe would have said, hear me out. Yeah. I still care about you and I will never stop caring about you. And I will never do something like this. Mm. Remember who we were. Mm. And I would do that too. But that time, it yeah. was just like, how the fuck can you even expect yeah. this out of me? How are you accusing me of something as yeah. stupid as this? Yeah. You know, I, there are so many things in a relationship that are overrated. For example, you or sentences that you'll hear that are usually popular, but I think they're entirely wrong. Number one, you need to fight for your relationship to be healthy. I think that is absolute bullshit. You have to work for no, your relationship. No, no, no. You have to... It is important in a relationship for some amount of fighting for it to be a healthy relationship. You Disagreements, this. yes. But fighting, no. Yeah. I, I, I got it. I, yeah. yeah. So I think that's bullshit. But what I was getting at is I also feel closure... Yeah. is overrated <laughs> sorry really I, I think no closure when I dealing with very... the loss or the death of a person I think yeah. personal closure is important exactly yeah. I feel like a lot of times like I've not had closure with this gentleman yeah but I've had personal closure exactly but that see that's what I'm saying with every relationship you learn that it the time for personal closure reduces yes like the sooner you find yeah. it the sooner you're over this shit yeah, yeah. you know what I mean even though can I tell you something I feel like again since our show is GBCD and it's like an LGBTQI perspective mm. I feel like a lot of times there is an invisible clock running for gay guys because Oh my god, another relationship failed Again, and yeah. now I'm 30 yeah. and oh my god, when will what, I find yeah. the next one? Then you find the next one and then that doesn't look on. Mm. Oh my god, now I'm 35 yeah. and this has ended and now what? You know, there's a, first of all, you, that's a separate job of like not listening to that invisible clock, clock. because you know what? There it'll is happen no, yeah. it'll happen when it happens yeah. but I feel so many times and especially just again thinking about what my friends go through post breakup I've always felt a little alien to their problems because I don't do any of the shit they do yeah. to themselves whether it's like going down the route of drug abuse or yeah, alcohol yeah. Yeah. Uh, serious issues yes, like that yeah. or just like months of moping and yeah, whining yeah. and yeah. I'm like I, I don't do again be little be little issues, that. of course because everyone but has I just their... see like so much of their grief Grievance is coming from the fact of not finding closure of what happened Personally. or making a personal yeah. uh, or coming to terms with the, yeah. themselves that, hey, you yeah. know, that you know what wasn't working. Yeah. You know, I get it. Sometimes it's not as easy, right? It's not that black and you white. You know so. what? My most, I mean, in my life, mm. my most toxic relationship mm. also had the most toxic breakup mm. taught me how to deal with stuff. And what you said is mm. so important mm. that closure mm. has to be personal. It's okay if it's not a mutual Absolutely. closure. And this was a relationship with someone when I was 21. Mm. And this person was like 15 years older than yeah. me. Yeah. And uh, boss, I saw like gaslighting. I saw like, you know, emotional yeah. abuse, yeah. Uh, everything, yeah. like all of that, the whole, yeah. Yeah. the whole deal. And I remember breaking down, mm. thinking... What a lot, a lot of your friends might be thinking, hmm. how will I go on? Yeah. How will I manage tomorrow? How yeah. will I yeah. ever find someone yeah. who's as amazing as this? Sure. And I don't, uh, I don't know how it happened, hmm. but there was this, okay, so there was silence from this person hmm. who like, obviously there was just like complete shunning out of, hmm. uh, uh, just, it was ugly as fuck. Hmm. But, 
I remember I came to the conclusion I came mm. to that closure that this person is toxic for me and he will continue being toxic and he was never good for mm. me in the first place mm. was um he's not spoken to me for like 2 months mm. not messaged me not returned my calls mm. even like and there was just like ghosting mm. and michael jackson passed away <sighs> I remember oh, the ice cream cake. Yeah, <laughs> and randomly he messages me saying Michael Jackson has passed away, hmm. and I realized this is his way of playing with my expectations. <laughs> this man <laughs> is just playing me, hmm. and I snapped. And I realized if I understand hmm. that, I if I can manage to understand the other person's uh, motivations towards me, hmm. I think I'll be fine. Yeah, but see, and I realized I yeah. that day yeah. that this person needed me yeah. to snap out of it yeah. right there and right then. Can I? One of the most iconic lines I ever heard was in BoJack Horseman. Hmm. It's so difficult to see the red flags when you're wearing rose tinted yeah. glasses, you know. And that's something. Oh again, my god! Yeah, you know, like what you're saying right now, right? There are always anybody who's listening. If you have, there if are, you're going through a breakup, if you're in the process of amounting them. to a breakup, they are there. They yeah. are always there, and which is why I started this conversation with number one. You need, and I think it's something that comes with age. It's not yeah, something yeah, you yeah. can chisel. It, it really life chisels these. Uh, yeah, uh, gives you experiences that makes you. And it's a double-edged sword, by the way, because it also comes with cynicism. Sure. It also sure. jades you a sure. little bit. No, but I felt like I started this conversation with being honest with yeah. yourself. Fuck self acceptance and yeah, all of yeah, that. Yeah. But if you are honest with yourself, because here's the deal, right? The older you get, you start naturally weaning out the friends you know who yeah. actually are not mm, good for you. Yeah, who, who don't, don't add value. Leave alone the ones who are negative and toxic yeah, to your yeah. life. You also start realizing who don't add any yeah. value. You start letting go. You start like. Finding jobs that are more, you know, your body Fulfilling. naturally starts, or, or your life naturally yeah, yeah, starts yeah. doing this thing where you start doing satisfactory, yeah, fulfilling, enriching things for yeah. yourself, you know, uh, right from the food you eat to like the person you date. And I feel like when you are, again, when you're honest with yourself in that sense, it's so easy to see what's not good for what's, you yeah yeah you know it's what's not it's a simple thing honestly yeah. like you know and you can uh, it's you know what's shit is yeah. that you can only see it in the past sometimes because i i remember recently i don't know how i ended up on this side of youtube but i was seeing videos of domestic violence people who have been hmm. through domestic violence right and there is always a Oh, he does this, 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 this to me, you know, but he also looks after yeah. me, but he also loves it's me, a pattern. but he, you know what I mean? And I feel it's so easy to do that in a toxic relationship yeah. where there's no physical of, if mm-hmm. there, I, hope I hope there's hope not, not, but if there is also, it's so difficult to look beyond, but it's just a matter of stopping and asking yourself, is this making me a better person yeah. is this detrimental to my life yeah, uh, yeah, this yeah. person or this situation that I found myself in and then when you have the answer that's just 50% <laughs> finding out if this is right or yeah. wrong for you but the other 50% is having the gall to, or the strength to find yourself and be, be like, okay with it I cannot do this yeah. I cannot do this to myself be, yeah to be okay with Snipping the cord. This what is what is what does RuPaul sign of every? How the hell uh, do you expect uh, someone yeah. to what? Yeah, wait. Uh, how, how the hell? Or wait. Uh, how, how the, the hell? hell can, do you, no, no, no. no okay, you yeah, love, I got it. I got uh, it. If you can love yourself, how the how how the hell will uh, love yourself? How the hell will you love someone else? <laughs> we just like something like that. Yeah. Oh my god. But yeah, that's so uh, true. But you know, that's the thing, right? And this has been said. Like I think I've read this when I was a kid, even. Like if you don't love yourself. You can't How the love, hell someone can else. You love someone else. But I think it's tricky because if you don't love yourself, you will end up in a relationship where someone won't love you either. Yeah. You know, and that is where toxic that's, relationships yeah, are born because, because you don't want gap. that. You are doing it to yourself already. You don't need another person in your life. Yeah. 
who's fucking making you miserable yeah. you know so uh, there's always red flags yeah uh, and you owe it to yourself to see those red flags for what they are whether it's cheating mm. uh, whether it's gaslighting yeah. whether it's and I feel like yeah sure we were talking about breakups but this is more about toxic relationships and shit but I feel like the amount you can salvage for yourself when that ends. Yeah. In that sense, those breakups are easy then. Yeah, yeah. They are easy. You will come out like stronger and better yeah. and kinder to yourself and all of those things. Because, yeah, it's easy to right now, even for me, I'm just like putting myself under the microscope yeah. and thinking of all these things that I'm saying. Is it coming from my cynical, like... I've been through this drill. I mm. know how it is. Or, and I've been single for long. So, you know, I'm not going to like yeah. whatever. But I feel like a relationship, uh, the end of a relationship doesn't have to be half as devastating as we project it, it to, to be. be yeah, when it's absolutely. ending. Now, I I want to end on this note. Because sure. we, we are... We are not experts by any measure. <laughs> any measure. Like, please. Maybe tomorrow if I had to break up with someone, I'll be, no, I can do this <laughs> I'll be one of those. But, yeah. I think I let both of us, yeah. if we had to give one piece of advice, mm. especially to the queer community, mm. when it comes to breakups and relationships, what would yours be? I, I know mine. We'll because start with you. When you're with a person, <sighs> hmm. Make sure mm. that you are uh, their second priority mm. and not their first priority. Mm. And make sure that that person is your second priority. You should be your first priority. And Absolutely. that I, I think that's something I've 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 learned over years and I've learned by just mm. witnessing mm. the more successful relationships mm. around me. Mm. It they've flourished because mm. these people invest in themselves mm. and this is not selfish at all they invest in themselves mm. in bettering themselves mm. in being better versions of themselves taking care of themselves mm. their passions their work mm. and because of that mm. they are better for it mm. and they can be bigger people mm. to their partners Absolutely. i think that that that's something i've learned over over time yeah 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 Oh, oof. if I had to, what? Sorry, what, your question was: give advice just, to someone just, going yeah, through a breakup, a, a relationship, or just yeah, anything hmm. to the queer community. I'm trying to like uh, because not say the usual. The reason love yourself I and yeah uh, accept yourself yeah. bullshit. No, and I I'll just tell you the reason why hmm. I say this because hmm. we have this. Um, <laughs> I, at least I've I've seen a lot hmm. of people, and I've I faced hmm. it myself. We look for um um. I mean, it's very common, daddy issues, whatever. Sure. But we look for a mentor. We look for someone who can take care of us very mm. often. Or we look for someone to take care of uh, in the queer community. I guess my, yeah, my advice is somewhere there. Yeah. I have uh, never looked, some, looked for someone to complete me. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, when, if I see it as two jigsaw puzzle pieces, you know, I feel like that's what we do a lot of yeah. times. And then you feel like the puzzle's incomplete if that piece is lost. Yeah. I don't see it like that. I feel like I don't uh, expect someone to... Uh, I don't expect anyone to see me as their project. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't want to be someone's yeah. project. I don't want someone to be my project. Yeah. Uh, but really if if i really have to like crystallize uh some advice i can give uh shush i'm i'm really at a but you did us. that you yeah, just did, I did that but yeah i don't know i feel like there is a larger thing i'm trying to say here, which that is no one completes you like it's not no one people completes make you, you better or, because see even right now i want to say something like put yourself first which, yeah. which is you know your sure, priority yeah. and uh, prioritize and stuff like that but i just always feel like uh, a person the, can't fill a hole <laughs> i mean okay i just i just heard how it sounded i'm so sorry but yeah it's sometimes you Avoid. forget yeah, you forget totally like forget. we are queer yeah. like, but like <laughs> okay so like a relationship can't yeah. fill a void it, is that it, what it is? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just gonna keep it simple and really, uh, just always 
practice uh, because it's like exercise or meditation mm-hmm. or anything else that you have to make a habit out of in life just make sure you constantly find ways to be honest, honest. with yourself yeah. and in that honesty learn not to be harsh to yourself yeah i feel like if you do these two things whether it's i feel like any life problems they suddenly are deflated a little mm. the moment you do that because you don't put yourself up on a pedestal yeah. where you expect certain things out of yourself out yeah, of other yeah, people yeah, 100%. out of so i feel the day you learn to do that flawlessly yeah. not flawlessly it's, you it's can't an do ongoing it project yeah, exactly. for the rest of your life till you die yeah. uh, but like yeah i'm just uh, that's the one thing i would give someone as advice that hey don't don't be harsh to yourself and because i i'm really i'm trying to think of my toxic relationships and i really felt like i'll give you an example i once uh, i i dated and i almost uh, discussed marriage and by discuss marriage i feel like my parents had met her parents mm. uh, that's how serious mm. that relationship had gotten but it was also the most toxic relationship of my life mm. and can i tell you something if i was honest uh, back then i was at my largest mm. i was at 100 and uh, 30 125 kilos mm. and uh, this chick was a fox okay she was like mm. the tits mm. <laughs> she was fucking gorgeous like so much so that every f- friend of mine was like how the fuck did you land this mm. you know not knowing the reality of what i was going through but i just had i had the sentience to understand back then that i am actually just with this person even though she treats me like shit she's mm. a terrible human being but because other people feel that you know basically like a trophy wife mm-hmm. like you know that i did that mm. i knew that all along and this i can say this now because this relationship was like 10 years ago mm. but when i was in it it i wouldn't i knew it but it was so easy to have like blinders uh, again rose tinted yeah. glasses and like just not being able to tell myself that this is it you are yeah. putting yourself through so much misery and pain and toxicity just because you do not want to break up with someone who might you know who mm. it was just uh i would have saved myself so much time and yeah. uh yeah uh yeah. just unpleasantness in mm. my life and she still calls me till day saying i was the best like now that she's a better person mm. she realizes who she was yeah. and this is not a snub or anything in any way to her yeah. or to whatever it was it was just like time goes on and mm. you move the fuck on and yeah. things change and you always and that's the thing i i sometimes feel like my friends want to jap me when i say this but i am one of those people who fell in love every time i was in a relationship mm. just because i've always been that vulnerable that honest that real and mm-hmm. all those things i felt like i've been in love in every relationship mm. of mine and uh, it was uh, what am i trying to say here? like i was in love <laughs> in every relationship and that's when the breakups are also like softer because like again i did my bit i did my mm. this and all of that and now in retrospect something that happened 10 years earlier i realized that it was because i wasn't in love with myself so yeah, yeah. i'm i'm just going to stop there yeah, yeah. with this whole thing <laughs> yeah. yeah well this has been a deep heavy? episode yeah i, sometimes, I wouldn't say heavy. sometimes i feel like when we have a heavy conversation i feel it in the room do you feel it like does I it happen i feel it today especially when he spoke about like uh, i forgot the title of the episode but when he spoke about uh, you were really down and uh, shit yeah yeah, yeah 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 but that time, yeah. you know you can feel it in yeah. the air the yeah. studio gets a little dense yes yeah but uh, regardless i feel like uh, again it's, the, we, it's important to talk about even though we talk about bright and sunny things all the time but do it's we? important do to we? <laughs> yes we do uh, but but it's important to uh, talk about the grays it's cuz it I mera bas chalta tha i would only talk about the oh, grays oh fuck no like the fun I, I, side I, of grays like i, I like the fun talking side about of both. grays yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah yeah that's about it I know I, one thing I want to say is I know we started with we'll talk about breakups and we ended up talking about but we should do a proper more laser focused conversation about breakups. I feel like 
how? Because I I feel like there's so much that goes into breakups and how they end and like yeah. what the again what the damage is afterwards and especially all of that. for the queer community. Which is why uh, we feel like we yeah. need more specific pointers. Yeah, I think we should get a guest. You know? Like you know, we should get a guest. For Someone the, that has been episode. through a breakup. A lot of breakups. Please breakup. apply. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please apply. Anyone who's going through a breakup, yeah. maybe come sit yeah. with us, talk to us. Yeah. <laughs> so. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are IVM podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to us, uh, Farad. I'm uh, Farad Karkaria on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Mastodon, Tumblr, okay. uh, <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> and I'm uh, Glitterbugged, B-U-G-G-E-D, on Instagram. <laughs> so that's about it for today. Yes. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Uh, we'll be in your ears. We will, <laughs> we will come in your ears. Yeah, and soon. keep messaging us. We love... <laughs> We love all the messages that you guys send us and keep suggesting stuff that you want to hear. Yeah. All right then. Okay, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Namaste. I am Saurabh Chandra. And I am Pranay Kutistan. जब महफिल खत्म होते होते दरवाजे के बाहर पुलिया के ऊपर हम दुनिया भर की जटिल समस्याओं को सॉल्व करने में लग जाते हैं तो हो जाती है पुलियाबाजी अब आजकल के अपार्टमेंट वालों ने तो कभी पुलिया देखी नहीं होगी पर आप फीलिंग तो समझ ही सकते हैं तो आइए शामिल हो जाइए हमारी पुलियाबाजी में जहां प्रणय और मैं एक से एक इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स की तह तक जाएंगे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस बिटकॉइन पाकिस्तान मेडिकल एजुकेशन करेंसी क्राइसिस कभी हम दोनों के साथ और अक्सर स्पेशल एक्सपर्ट गेस्ट की कंपनी में सुनिए हमें आईवीएम की वेबसाइट ऐप या अपने फेवरेट पॉडकास्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म पर हर दूसरे हफ्ते हाय गाइस दिस इज आयुषी एंड आई एम रितासा एंड वेलकम टू अगला स्टेशन अडल्टहुड It's a fun podcast we've got going on and we'd love for you to tune in and enjoy with us. Join us as we stop at various stations and discuss different topics that seem to be bothering us and hope to do as well. Relationships, beauty, just being an adult, lots of different things. We don't have a great grip on it, but we've done okay so far. Catch Agla Station Adulthood every Thursday on the IVM app, the IVM website or wherever else you get your podcasts.